Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can easily create this eye-catching stacked page design. This is excellent to show off a web page, a report, a downloadable, anything that has kind of multiple pages and you want to allude to more. It's really eye-catching, beautiful, and something that I do all the time for my clients. And best of all, it's fairly simple to put together with a few simple steps, and you can do so inside of Microsoft Word, Google Slides, Canva, and many other design programs. Let's get started. So as I mentioned, it's, this is a very simple design to do, but it's very impactful. It's a beautiful design and it's one that I use all the time with my clients. Wonderful for showing off the fact that there's more to a particular image. So there's multiple web pages, multiple pages to the report. And again, it, it pops off the page. It really creates a good impact for it. Now, one of the parts that can be somewhat difficult on this is the shadows. What's really important to create that kind of stacked 3D view is having shadows on each element. Some design programs have a, a shadow that you can apply to elements, and that's great. And if it doesn't, I suggest you hop over to my website. I have this free shadow element download. This is just a batch of PNGs, shadows that are prepared, ready to go. There's ones where it's cut off and you can snap it to the bottom. One, you can put it behind the element like we'll use today. I'll be using my own uh, shadow element here today. Uh, and this can be used in any program, again, Word, Canva, everything else. Something I use all the time. Uh, if you want to get a hold of it, I'll leave the description below, completely free download. So the key for this is having images of what you want to stack, be that the web page or the report, whatever else, and then putting them on three, adding the shadow, and then playing with opacity and position. But let's do this step by step. So the first thing you're gonna need is pages that you wanna present. And this is again, either your website or a PDF report, whatever it is. You will need images of those three of decent high quality. Now, if it is for a website or even for a PDF you kind of found online, you wanna get a big quality version of it, a really useful plugin you can use is Go Full Page, Full Page Screen Capture. So all this does, free plugin for Chrome, I believe it works on Edge and possibly Firefox. But all it allows you to do is if you go over here to the uh, little camera icon that shows up and you click on it, it's going to capture the entire web page for it. And there you go. Now you can play with the size of your browser if you want a different sized image, and then you could crop this, only take a piece of it. Um, of course, you could take this whole thing, place it into uh, Canva and then crop it there. Let me see if we can do a quick copy. Just show that quickly. There we go. And then for instance, let's see, that's, that's way too large for us. So if we wanted to, you know, crop it down this way, and now we can play with this shape, right? And now, now we can apply this. We take two or three different ones. So that's one way to grab it. The other way I'd suggest you do it is just with a, the screen capture tool that you'll have on Mac or PC. And simply enough, is it going to do the same type of principle except you'll control what you're capturing. So here I grab my website, I'll go ahead and copy it. I'll go over to, again, Canva. And as you can see, now I can control it. Now again, that's a little bit too wide, so I'd want to reduce the browser size, but I trust that you would work through that. That also does work for the reports itself. Let's say I want to create this, this design element for this Deloitte uh, PDF that's been put together. So let's go ahead and reduce it down a bit. I don't need it full size. And now let's get a new screen capture. All right, there we go, nice size of that. I'll copy it, bring it over, and there we have it. So now we'd be able to add the various um, elements to it. I'll tell you what, we already did the, I will show you what this one looks like. Let's go ahead and do this live with the Deloitte. I was gonna do it with these three, but I think it might be more interesting to show you this part. So if we were designing for these folks, what we'd wanna say is like, hey, this is a great report. There's multiple pages, a lot of beautiful pages you should download. So to do the effect, what we'll do is we'll find three pages that look quite nice that might be stacked. Let's see. I kind of like this one that actually shows like there's decent content inside of it. Let's go ahead and grab it again. So a new snap, grab it live. Now I'm currently pasting this into Canva. I'm gonna do it with Canva, but there's no reason, and I'll show you quickly towards the end how I do this with Google Slides as well, by way of demonstration. Or you could do this in Word, like it's not really, Word you'll have slightly more problems, but it's about the same principle. All right, so let's go with the at least three pages. Let's find one more, that's a nice looking page. That'll fit nicely on the right side. One, two, three. And you could definitely do this with the free version of Canva. What you would have to be 
aware of is the free version of Canva does not let you download PNGs without a background. So you'd want to make sure that whatever background color of these squares are is where it will live. So if it's going to be on a white web page, you want to make sure this is white. So it's a JPEG that sits nicely on top of it. Okay, so we've got our three pages, one, two, three. So the second part of this is we're going to want to apply a, the shadow to each. And this is where inside of Canva there is no uh, real good way to do a shadow itself. So we'll go to the uploads and I've already pre-uploaded my shadow pack. As you can see there's some elements here. Other ones I have have it cut off so you can just snap it to the bottom. It's a cool effect but something for a different time. Let's go ahead and grab this. This seems to be the wrong element. Oh, it uh, included it right inside of it. So it, it filled this space because I had it selected. So, okay, so there's this element. I'm going to position it about in the center. And then you kind of play with size and you decide how much of a shadow you want. And generally speaking, about the safest way to do shadows is if you have it as if it's directly behind it and then push it down a little bit. Having shadow that bleeds off to the left or right uh, it can certainly work and you can play in if you like it. That's great. I find the easiest and safest shadow is put it directly behind it and then push it down a little bit. That, uh, that tends to always look good on the web and for other documents. So following my own advice, that's where it goes. And before I push it around, I'm going to just copy it. So I'm going to make a copy of it, Control C or Command C. Then I'll right click and we're going to want to send to back so it's behind it. There we go. And you see how like it just jumps right off the page. And again, this is the shadow pack you can grab from my site. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to do a line at the same place. What's nice with Canva is it tells you where all the other items are and it helps you line up for it. I'll put it there. I'll send it back. Great. And tell you what, copy, paste one last time. You can see the power of a shadow too, just creating that subtle effect, but it really is impactful to have it kind of jump off the page. Quite beautiful. Like that on its own kind of immediately looks better, right? So <laughs> let's push it even further. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to group them. So right now they're two separate options. Uh, so you can press Control or Command G, or you can hit this button up here, Group. And again, most of these steps, like the keys or the exact placement of it will differ, but these steps, add an image, add the shadow image, put it behind it, group it, always the same. You can do this whatever program you like. So let's hit Group. This one too, Group. So we've now placed these three, we've now grouped them. And now it's about order. We want to make sure this guy this one, this front page is in front. So position, forward. Let's make sure it's on top of everything. Great. So the thing to do now is to adjust it and have it feed behind. As you see in my uh, first effect, and again, this is what's great is you can play with this and see what exact arrangements you like. I tend to like to reduce the size a bit, so to f push it even further into the background and then apply a subtle tra uh, transparency so it fades into the background too and that really helps just push it behind as you'll see. But let's do each of the steps uh, kind of one by one. So in Canva anyways we grab this and there's a little dial that shows up at the bottom and we'll go ahead and rotate it. Kind of put it behind. This one too. Now again this is a group so the shadow and the page is grouped. We'll go ahead and rotate it whatever degree we like and we'll put it behind there. So this sort of like bottom shape I'm not really liking. That's why I tend to like to reduce these down a bit so they really become secondary to that first main beautiful title page. At this point, like I said, this is all about preference and how the designs kind of bleed off one another. And you see how I kind of chose something where the colors and the content of the pages would produce a certain impact. So that looks pretty sharp, that looks pretty good. But we can go ahead and want to reduce it down to the background a little bit further choose those items, reduce the transparency, and there we have it. So as you said, that took no time at all and I was talking through the steps. So capture the pages you want, paste, 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 add the shadow in the background, or if your program has a shadow feature, add it, and then shift, align position, and you are in great shape. Another um, suggestion I might have, I'll go ahead and duplicate this, is I, I sometimes like it where if you have the main page on the right and the other pages are kind of feeding into it. One, two, and three. Now you will notice, you've probably noticed that I have a problem 
in that because this itself is transparent, it's bleeding through into that. I'm going to show you two tricks how to take care of that. So here's the first big image, one and two. So the tricks to take care of it, it kind of depends on the software. And I think Canva here actually doesn't quite work, but I'll try. Uh, so let's go ahead and ungroup it. Now, unfortunately, it kept the transparency, so I'm going to have to add that back up. So let's pretend we were just back at this step. So one, two, three, uh, these two are now ungrouped. Let's also ungroup this. Very good. So what we could do, if we don't mind it all being the same transparency, is that we could group all of them now and then apply the transparency to the entire group. So what you'll find is that if you apply, if you have the shadow behind, then you have the image on front, the image of the uh, PDF, and then you make the PDF image transparent, you will then start to see the shadow behind. So you'll get that kind of black bleeding through. So the better way to do that is to group the two of them and apply the transparency, because then the, most programs will apply the transparency to the whole and let you see through. In this case here, I grouped them together and we're able to uh, get the effect that we wanted. So there we go. So that's kind of a different approach to it too. If you want to have the image on the right, and have things kind of like bleeding into it. Just like that. As you can see, like just like capture, 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 shadow, shadow, shadow. You are practically done. It's good to go. Now really fast, just for a way of comparison, let me show you how to achieve this in uh, Google Slides. Right, so here's a shadow element that I have. So you can do the same thing as far as, so here's like the three same images. I trust that you would do those three. Now, if I take this shadow image from my pack, I take that and order, send to back. Right, you can, you can imagine doing the same thing. However, for the purpose of Google Slides, let me show you that in fact, they do have a shadow feature to it. So I can select these three and you'll see here in the format options, you can apply a drop shadow. So from here, we can choose how transparent we can see like at what angle 90 degrees would be straight up and down and then distance, how far, you know, down or up blur radius, like how much of a blur do you want on it? Right? So you can play with those settings and kind of get the same type of effect and that's right on it. So it just produces one less, um, complexity for you. I tend to like my <laughs> shadow pack, of course, but of course I'm biased on that. So let's just uh, wrap this up fast. Let's do the same thing. And actually this is, I'll be able to show you a really interesting uh, fix for an issue I sometimes find with this. Uh, now you can either, to arrange it, to make it on the front, you can either order, uh, bring to front. That's great. If I'm in a rush, I sometimes cut and then just paste, get it in front. That's just a little bit faster. Okay, so we're going to be doing the same thing here. Let's, let's reduce the size down. Let's reduce the size down. And we're looking to rotate. And I think in this case, we grab the little knob here up on the top. One, two, three. In many ways, this is even faster because without the background shadow needed, we're able to put that in really fast. Now let's add some transparency to this. Okay, so you see the issue where the image is going transparent, but the shadow is there. So it's kind of becoming murky, right? That's not good. We don't want that effect. So a couple ways we can deal with this. A, accept that it's going to be um, just no transparency on those. Looks fine. That's not a problem. Another trick I like to use, so if you, this is again, you would definitely need to have a flat color background behind. But what we can do is we can take a shape. So we'll go ahead and take, let's assume that we're going to be, the final image will be going on a white website or a white design. Let's take a shape. We'll take this square, draw over where we want to be. Let's make sure the color is white. We want no border, uh, transparent border. And then let's add some transparency to it. Oops, too much transparency. So color, let's go with uh, custom. And here we go, transparency. Let's assume about 60, 50%. There we go. So all we've done is we took the same, we drew a square. We did the same color as our background. And then we just we placed it over top. And now all we need to do is take the one we want to be in front that has none of the um, 
softness to it or what would be transparency. We'll bring that to front. We take this image, we place it behind. And we, now we get, it's a cheap way to get that same effect if you're having trouble with the ordering and the transparency on it. But there you have it, you can see how fast it goes and how impactful is that. To, to A, it looks great, it's eye-catching, but it also is meaningful in so much as you're telling the user there's multiple pages, there's depth to this thing. So it, it's a wonderful double effect for your design. And as I saw with my shadow pack or with the built-in program that whatever you're using, not that hard to do. So I hope you'll give it a try. I'd love to see some examples from it. And if you need any help with designs or anything else, reach out. We'd love to put together such a tutorial for you. All right. Cheers to your great looking designs.